News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Chris Kroc Show. And uh, the Trump trial. So today, Trump, uh, the jury selection, etc., continuing on. Today we learned that there's seven jurors that have been selected. The foreman is from Ireland originally, born in Ireland. Now, producer Garrett got all excited because you've been there, but dude, that is a very socialist leftist country. You know that, right? Yeah, and um, I don't trust this guy one iota because of that. But second of all, the jobs of some of these people, five of the seven have a college degree or higher education, two men on the panel are lawyers, and guess what? They are corporate lawyers with DEI highlighted on the corporate the, on the on their uh, company's website. So these are DEI lawyers, uh, well they're lawyers for a company that rapidly supports DEI which means they hate orange man. And the question by the way, some of these jurors were screened out because they uh, the jury was uh, the 96 names that have been pooled were made known to the defense and, and prosecution on Monday. And uh, Trump team dug through and they found out that some of these people had vile anti-Trump things on their website. Like lock him up was what one said when Trump was the president. That guy was uh, found. They threw him out. The judge the judge didn't want to throw him out. Or, was it, or, or the judge considered it and finally agreed to that. But a lot of these ones they wanted to throw out, he wouldn't. Four men and three women... Um, you're looking at uh, a lot of elite types here, is what I was listening to on Fox News today. None of these jurors had particularly strong views about Trump or politics. But when you when you saw what their views were, there was one African American lady who thankfully is a listens to talk radio. She gets her news from talk radio among other places. So I I trust that juror because there's very little liberal talk radio. But uh, the other jurors like said and New York Times. You know NPR, etc. All that stuff. I was like, oh, dude, th- th- I, that's this is so bad. Many jurors said they did not have an opinion of Trump and did not, uh, but that did not align with their social media. The uh, report says that I have here from uh, Yahoo. One person had videotaped celebrations in New York after Biden won the election. And uh, the person said, I very, very uh, strongly believe, regardless of my thoughts about anyone or anything, political feelings or convictions, the job of a juror is to understand the facts, blah, 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 blah. I don't trust that person. Do you? Absolutely not. You can lock up and you can make sure your guy wins again. I don't trust this jury at all. Do you? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Do you think Trump's going to get a fair trial? Do you think that the jury has already made up its mind? I, I mean, I, I think if we're lucky, maybe one or two people have not made up their mind already, and the rest are lying. Happens all the time, is what I've heard uh, from different experts and such on Fox News. So do you trust this jury, and do you actually think that uh, Trump's going to get a fair trial here? Or do you agree with me that you think uh, Trump's not going to get a fair trial, and this uh, jury has already made up its mind for the most part? I don't think this is going to be justice in any way, shape, or form. And I think to think otherwise is uh, is hopeful, uh, delus- delusional hopefulness. 800-288-WBAP is our number. Um, the Boyd Dwyer process where they get 30 minutes for each side to uh, interview them, ask them a lot of questions, continues on tomorrow. But the DA is also, DA Alvin Bragg is so PO'd because Trump kicked butt and took names today. He went out. I really do fear he's going to get convicted, and they're going to they're going to go after him. I don't like it at all. I don't think this case is going to sway the public though from voting for him or voting against him. Actually, I think it might get people to vote for him, knowing that this is the one that widely, um, I want to say two thirds of everybody polled in this room, maybe even more, say it's just this is a bogus BS case. So um, I want to say that uh, what I've heard too, and I agree with that that uh, Trump is not going to suffer at the polls because of this case. But the what angers me, what concerns me is the judge, Judge Juan Marchand, who is a three-time Biden voter, excuse me, a three-time Biden donor, who should have recused himself. This is unprecedented for a judge to be uh, a three-time 
donator to the man who's on trial to the to his opponent. It's unbelievable. Everything is rigged. This is so rigged, it's pathetic. The charges are bogus. As you know, the FEC looked at this to investigate it with the hush money garbage. They didn't do anything. They said there's nothing here. The, the DOJ looked at it, investigated it, see if there's anything there. They said nothing. Cy Vance, the former uh, progressive prosecutor uh, in this position uh, as Alan Bragg, is, looked at it and said there's nothing there. Alvin Bragg looked at it and said there's nothing there. But then one of the guys on his staff did a tell-all and attacked him and such over this in a tell-all book. So then he said, okay, there's some Something there. The whole thing's a joke. It's a disgrace. And I don't, the only thing we can hope for is so far out of the seven jurors, the one African American woman who uh, is a, uh, is a, listens to talk radio to get her news among other places. She, she said Google, which is like, Ugh, but she says Google and talk radio. And I forget the other one. The rest of them say New York Times, NPR, everything that's leftist. And um, it's New York City where 90% of the people voted against Trump in the last election. But what he is doing is winning, I believe, in the public opinions uh, polls. Here he is at the bod- – he went to a bodega today. You know what a bodega is, a convenience store for us uh, DFW folk. And he went to a bodega, and uh, it was amazing. Listen to this. And there were people, a bunch uh, – in New York City is uh, just a, has a heck of a lot of people of color. When I lived there for four months, it was amazing. The spectrum of how many different people from all different over was was amazing. I, I remember telling my friends and family back home, this is one of the reasons why it's unbelievable here. There's there's um, race is not even an issue because, well, I mean, no, that, that happens still. But it's like there's so many different people from so many different places and so many different colors of so many people. It's beautiful, actually. Um, uh, but let me play this. Uh, from Trump going to a bodega today where there were a lot of uh, Hispanic kids and people of color were just chanting Trump, Trump, Trump. They want law and order. They have a lot of crime, tremendous crime, where their stores are being robbed. We have to straighten out New York, and that includes crime. And these guys have great people, great friends, but they have tremendous crimes. It's Alvin Bragg's fault. Yeah. Alvin Bragg does nothing. He goes after guys like Trump, who did nothing wrong. Violent criminals, murderers. They know there are, there are hundreds of murderers all over the city. They know who they are. They don't pick them up. They go after Trump. This, wasn't that great? They have got Trump! <laughs> this is a brilliant political move. He went to the bodega. Do you remember that bodega where uh, the man from the Dominican Republic came here, opened up a bodega, uh, uh, a thug and his uh, thug girlfriend were demanding they give that he give him, the bodega owner, a bag of chips for free. He said, no, I'm not giving you a bag of chips for free. So then the boyfriend said, my girlfriend here is going to stab you. If you don't, then she started stabbing him. They were literally attacking him. He was backed into a corner. He had no one to help him. He was being stabbed. So he fought back and killed uh, the man. And for that, Alvin Bragg arrested him, charged him with murder, and put him in jail. Had to come up with $125,000 or $200,000 bail. Trump went there today. And you heard those uh, those chants for him in New York City, deep blue New York City. Here's more. Isn't that beautiful? Now, the DA, Alvin Bragg, is asking the judge next week to shank, sanction Trump for violating the gag order while he's uh, disparaging Alvin Bragg and some of the witnesses who are attacking him. He wants $1,000 fines and a warning that future violations could put Trump in prison. So another question I want to add to the fold for you is, if you were Trump, would you keep attacking the people that are attacking you that are witnesses? It's vile. That the witnesses can attack Trump, like the star witness, like Michael Cohen, a convicted felon who a judge said you are a serial liar, can attack Trump publicly, but Trump can't respond back and attack him back. There's just that this is this whole thing is rigged. It's so angering. Uh, so if you were Trump, would you keep speaking out even if it meant getting fined or even jailed? I wonder if this justice. I was thinking about this today in the shower. I, was thinking, I do a lot of deep thinking in the shower, don't you? And I was thinking. Um, and I know you wanted that image. Um, just kidding. Um, a lot of people, uh, I'm thinking, you know, do you think Juan Merchan, the judge, would really, this liberal Democrat judge who loves Biden, do you think this judge would literally throw Trump in jail? I mean, he's the president. It's one thing to threaten it, but do you think he would actually put the president in jail? And then we all have talked about how that works. He'd have to, the Secret Service would have to block out a wing in the jail. I mean, it would be unreal. 
All right, so uh, your call next, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Chime in right now. And uh, if you were Trump, would you keep attacking him if it meant getting uh, fined or jailed? And do you think that Trump's going to get a fair trial? Do you think the jury has already made up his mind, as I do? 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Bob, excuse me, Bill Barr, former AG for Trump, who does not like Trump anymore, you will love to hear what he said about this whole case. It's uh, good stuff. That's next on the Chris Crock Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Well, I, I've said from the beginning, this this case is an abomination. You know, it's obviously political. Seven years after he pays hush money to try to come up with this case. It's also, as you say, it's not only far-fetched. It's, it, it, they're trying to predicate it on a federal crime, which wasn't prosecuted. And they're wrong about it. This was not uh, a, a, a campaign contribution. They're just wrong on the law. But to me, this shows uh, that the real threat to liberty, uh, the real threat to our system are the excesses of the progressive left. They, they're perverting the system of justice. Uh, and, you know, that's where the danger lies, the corruption and subversion of our institutions by the left. Bill Barr, uh, former AG for Trump on News Talk. 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3, make it a preset. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. The uh, judge gag order, it's amazing in the Trump trial. So there's A.G. Barr saying it's a joke, it's an abomination. He does not in any way like Trump. And, by the way, he was asked, will you vote for Trump? And he said that uh, Joe Biden would be committing national suicide, voting for um Voting for Joe Biden, so whoever's on the ticket, he will vote for him, even if it's Trump, which it obviously is. So that's good to know. And I think, what's his name, Pence refuses to vote for him? <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro, Ham. Uh, let go of your grudge. Now, the uh, Attorney General, excuse me, the D- District Attorney Alvin Bragg, who's prosecuting this bogus case in New York, said he asked the judge to sanction Trump, as I mentioned, uh, if he violates a gag order, which he has, and with $1,000 fines and warning that uh, you do it again, you're going to jail. If you were Trump, would you keep doing it anyway? Knowing that you might go to jail, or would you keep your mouth quiet and, and uh, do your best to fight back publicly as you can within the limits? I, this is so hard. This is when I don't know for sure if I would if I were him. Because it could be – I would honestly answer on this respect. It's all about winning the election. It just is. So, of course, you want to be found innocent, but it's also about winning the election, more importantly. Don't you think? If he had to choose between being convicted and, and uh, reelected, I think he'd pick reelected, wouldn't it? Wouldn't he? So, I think that uh, being reelected, I said, whatever is more politically advantageous for him is what I would do. And to me, it would seem lashing out is exactly what you should do, especially when, in light of the fact that you have uh, these other jurors attacking you. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you is, do you think Trump will actually get a fair trial? Do you think the jury has already made up its mind, as I do? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Let me play you a great piece of audio. This is from a so-called expert, uh, whatever you call it, an, an, uh, what do you call it, analyst on fake news, MSNBC. Listen to this. You're going to love this. Referring to Trump, a uh, fake news MSNBC analyst. Well, I, I've said from the beginning, this this case is an abomination. You know, it's obviously political. Wrong one. I meant to hit this one. Essentially, he's like a caged animal, and and that's a dangerous situation. He's feeling very threatened. Uh, he's out of control, and so we do expect him to lash out. Anybody who has covered him over the past decade can expect that. <laughs> he's a caged animal. Trump is a caged animal. We expect it to lash out. You know who the caged animal is? If anybody is caged, well, nah, I wouldn't even say animal, but you know who's caged and acts uh, who's out of control? Michael Cohen. He's actually a caged person. He's in a jail for being a uh, felony. Uh, I would call it. He's a felon and a convicted felon, and he also lied in uh, court. And the judge says he's a serial liar, and he was found guilty of being a perjurer. So he's caged. He's lashing out. And um, it's just funny. Uh, so do you think this sounds like he, uh, Trump is a caged animal lashing out? Let's listen closer to this. Here we go. 
They want law and order. They have a lot of crime, tremendous crime, where their stores are being robbed. We have to straighten out New York, and that includes crime. And these guys have great people, great friends, but they have tremendous crimes. It's Alvin Bragg's fault. Yeah. Alvin Bragg does nothing. He goes after guys like Trump, who did nothing wrong. Violent criminals, murderers. They know there are there are hundreds of murderers all over the city. They know who they are. They don't pick them up. They go after Trump. He doesn't sound unhinged, does he? He doesn't sound like a caged animal. <laughs> Man, these people are delusional. I love it. It's uh, hysterical to watch them. Uh, by the way, Melania uh, is uh, going to be, according to the Daily Mail today, Trump's rock during the trial. But will she take the stand? Insiders say to the Daily Mail that she is furious. Uh-oh. She's furious that her husband, Don Donald Trump, has mentioned Barron, but thinks the hush money case is a disgrace. Well, I mean, I guess for a mom, she's like, keep him out of this. But he still is not in any political eye or public eye unless you're a raging leftist. Then they attack him, but he didn't do anything wrong. Uh, there's another funny thing I saw yesterday, one of the articles saying, you know, Barron's going to be the worst of them all in a good way. Like he's going to be the, the most shrewdest, powerful and uh, of all of them. I, I, <laughs> they showed a picture. Of, I don't doubt it, though. I hope so. I hope he takes his father's mantle and kicks butt and takes names in, in the future. Meantime, uh, she's not going anywhere. She's there for him, said a source of Melania, but she's mad about uh, Baron. Uh, so that's kind of it. She was blindsided and humiliated and furious, is what they say, but she's done gone through multiple Trump scandals in the past. She's standing by. Well, that's a good wife. Um, of course, she's got to do the right thing, but that's a personal issue. Um the uh, what I want to talk about next is Mayorkas. Did you catch it? The impeachment uh, trial is already over. The impeachment trial lasted for what, like a half a day, two and a half days. Wait, what, didn't it start this morning? I can't even remember now. Was it a half day yesterday, half day today? I think it was just one day. Yeah, this is what happens when you have Democrats in charge. The Trump impeachment hearings are very serious, and they. They take them serious, and we got to have witnesses. we got to get out all the sides. But in this case, no witnesses, no sides, no investigation, no debate. It's over before it starts because this is what we want. The Democrats want an invasion. They want this, and they want Mayorkas to lie about the invasion. It's uh, profound. We're going to talk about that coming up next on the Chris Croc Show on New Stock 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. And by the way, not only will we talk about this, and if you supporting uh, support my orcas getting in peace, even if it's kind of over before it started, the other thing is another illegal immigrant that Joe Biden led in in the past couple of years has murdered another U.S. citizen. Thank you so much, Joe Biden. You kill us. We try to hold you and your uh, DHS secretary accountable, and it's not able to be allowed. We must pray and hope that the voters will hold them accountable. All right, it's next on the Chris Crock Show, News Talk 820 WBAP. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Alejandro Mayorkas impeachment trial is over before it, uh, almost before it began, actually. They really didn't begin the trial because they shot it down the Democrats because they control the Senate. And wait till you hear some of these things. Chuck Schumer, who uh, obviously is the Senate Majority Leader, said, quote, we set an unfortunate precedent here. It means the Senate can ignore – wait, actually, this is um, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, the turtle. He said, we set an unfortunate precedent here. It means the Senate can ignore, in effect, the House's impeachment, which is exactly right. See, when it's Trump, you do it. When it's not Trump, you don't do it. Got it? Now, um, th listen to this. Chuck Schumer said, quote, the impeachment should never, never be used to settle policy disagrees disagreements. But is this a policy disagreement? Is what Alejandro Mayorkas has done and what he's accused of doing really a policy disagreement? Or is it true that he lied to Congress and that he has made us less safe by allowing so many illegal immigrants to invade? Nine plus million uh, were allowed in, stamped and allowed in. 
many of whom are terrorists that were confirmed. There's two separate terrorists on the terror watch list who were allowed in for a year before they were stopped. One from Afghanistan and one from, uh, I think, Somalia, who's al-Shabaab. And they were in the country for one year before they, after they were stamped and let in by Joe Biden's uh, DHS. And second of all, the DHS secretary said there were so many, I played this audio cut for you, said there were so many Trump uh, executive orders, I think 94 of them, that we dismissed. We've lost track of, uh, I, I, I have, there's too many for me to tell you about when he was on that interview. I've played that for you, you've heard that a bunch of times. So is it really a policy disagreement or was he lying to us when he said the border was secure? And was he allowing in people who are murdering us, raping us, and robbing us? And the answer is yes and yes to both of those. He's allowed in terrorists. He has lied to us and said the border was secure when it wasn't. He has lied to us and said the border was when he said the border is secure, now he says it's a crisis because his boss told him it's a crisis. He needs to be truthful, and he lied to the Congress, and he has allowed in people that are killing us and raping our children, raping developmentally disabled people. One of the people that he allowed to fly in was a Haitian illegal migrant uh, to fly in directly from Haiti who raped a developmentally disabled uh, uh, woman. There was another that was flown in directly by him as uh, this uh, in this fly-in direct program that uh, is accused of raping a child. And uh, so the list goes on and on and on. So I think it's impeachable. And they said, well, it's not a high crime and misdemeanor. Well, let the trial take place. You, can, you literally had the, had the decision of whether it's a high, not a high crime and misdemeanor before the jury had a chance to vote on it. What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of the allegations coming forward? And if it is BS, then let, let the world see it. Let the country see it. So I think that the idea of this is a simple policy uh, disagreement is false. Do you actually think this is a simple policy disagreement? Do you consider your safety, whether it be terrorists or rapists or murderers, do you consider your safety to be a policy issue? Or is that a non-starter? And do you consider, consider when somebody whose job it is to protect us and protect the border, lies to us and says the border is secure when he knows it's not. Is that something that should be considered to be impeachable to you? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Uh, do you support impeaching Secretary Marcus, even though it's kind of over, but do you still think that uh, a trial should have happened? Do you think that these things that I'm talking about here, letting people in that want that are raping us, killing us, and are on the terror watch list and lying to us and telling us that it is secure when it's not at the border and we all know it, do you think that is something that is worthy of impeachment when it's your job to do those things and you lie about it to Congress? Uh, that is uh, one question I wanted to ask you, but also I mentioned to you that somebody else has been murdered at the hands of another illegal I think there might even be two of them. I want to make sure I get this accurate. So let me go to my Twitter feed, which is where you should be following me, at Chris Croc Show. That's at Chris Croc Show. Because yesterday on my Twitter feed, one of the many things that we found out was that uh, another illegal that Joe Biden let in and uh, uh, Alejandro Mayorkas let in has, um, has killed somebody. And here's one right here, a cartel, excuse me, a man arrested with in crash with Nevada Senator's advisor was in the U.S. illegally. An 18-year-old who was arrested in Nevada in connection with the death of an advisor to Senator uh, Catherine Cortez Masto. He was in the country illegally, one of uh, Joe Biden's illegals and one of uh, Mayorkas's illegals. He was allowed in, and he is now on an immigration detainer or ice hold being held at the jail there in in, uh, in uh, Nevada. He entered the United States under DHS Secretaries Mayorkas and Joe Biden's purview near Rio Grande City in Texas. All these people that are raping us, killing us, and murdering us are all coming in through our, our state. And our governor is supposed to be quiet about this crap? And, and, and our uh, DHS Secretary is allowing this and then he lies about it and we're supposed to be quiet about this and not impeach him? There is no recourse. We have no recourse. 
uh, this illegal uh, is uh, charged with a felony hit and run, charged with failing to stop at the scene of an accident. And he entered the U.S. March 12th of 2021 under Joe Biden and uh, DH Secretary Mayorkas. And he was um, entered without an inspection by an immigration official. And uh, there you go. He was arrested, then uh, released on his own cognizance, allowed to kill uh, uh, Senator Mosto's assistant. So now that a U.S. senator's assistant has been murdered by an illegal, maybe maybe some of these Democrats like her will start changing their mind. Meantime, uh, cartel gangsters, this is from the Daily Mail, cartel gangsters recruiting U.S. Army soldiers to smuggle in illegals into the U.S. A veteran who is 23 paid five grand to bring a group of illegals in. Army reservist Brandon Broadhead, 23, was caught in Eagle Pass, our state. Our state. 23-year-old Army reservist. He told News Nation he was paid five grand to bring the illegal into Eagle Pass. And uh, he says, you start seeing white Border Patrol vehicles, my stomach drops. There you go. One-way road. I was screwed, he said. Uh, Eric Adams is hitting back at the – remember I told you about the 1,000-plus illegal uh, African migrants The uh, from um, – I think from a a few uh, here, Haiti, Guinea, and West Africa. The majority of them were from Haiti, Guinea, and West Africa, although Haiti's not in Africa. But uh, Guinea and West Africa certainly are. Anyway, so the um, the media describing them as um, uh, African migrants. They descended on City Hall. They protested. They want to have work permits from Joe Biden, and they attacked the mayor. And the mayor actually spoke out and said, "You're you're bothering the wrong person." He said, Biden, you should you should uh, go after Biden. That's the first time I've ever heard Mayor Eric Adams blame Biden for this. Although he's blaming Biden by not giving them the work permits, which he could do. Unbelievable. This country's been thrown in. We are we have we, we have turned into a third world country by this president. We really have. Coming up next, uh, to make matters worse, let's get kicked in the teeth while we're on the ground or kicked in the gut. Ready? A North Carolina high school student has been suspended for using a term, a common term, when we talk about illegal immigrants and this illegal invasion. He's been suspended for it. You have to hear how this whole thing went down because it was his teacher that put him in this position to begin with. That is next, and we'll talk about that. If you think using the word illegal when describing an illegal alien is something that should be forbidden and should be uh, should get you expelled in your, in your high school. Isn't that amazing? And we'll talk about what do you call them? If you can't call them an illegal immigrant, what do you call them? All right, that's next on the Chris Crock Show. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. 800-288-WBAP is our number. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. North Carolina High School, a student suspended over using the term illegal alien. What do you use? What, what, do, you, what do you call them? That is reportedly offensive. What's that, producer? Yeah, a newcomer! You call him a newcomer! You got it, producer Garrett! Oh, newcomer! How about calling him an illegal newcomer? Is that that's I think that's fine, an illegal newcomer. How about a criminal invader? That might be better, a criminal invader. That's my most favorite one ever. Uh okay, producer Garrett throws in another one. Alien invader. Okay, but listen to this 16-year-old guy. Uh, his English teacher, listen to this, he was totally set up. English teacher giving an assignment that involved using vocabulary words such as the word alien. I mean, the freaking word alien's in there. Are you supposed to dance around this? I mean, what the heck? What's the number one news story for like three years since the invasion began? Illegal aliens invading us and Joe Biden letting them, wanting them. In response, the son asked the teacher if she meant play, like if she meant quote like space aliens or illegal aliens without green cards. <laughs> yes, yes. Or as Marv Abbott would say, yes, yes. Uh, another student allegedly took offense to the term and threatened to fight his uh, fight him, forcing the teacher to contact the assistant principal. They they later deemed that to be offensive to Hispanic students and punished him. 
punish him. They suspended him for three days. And they refused to take it off his record, which means God help him with scholarships. They're going to good schools. This is insanity. This is outrageous. Because of this question, our son was disciplined and given three out-of-day, out-of-school suspension days for, quote, racism. Racism for saying illegal alien, which is exactly what they are. You know? What the hell are you thinking? Okay, so kid is devastated, concerned the racism label on a school record will harm. Can you? Oh, my gosh. Oh, this poor kid. Uh, concerned the racism label on a school record will harm his future goal of receiving a track scholarship. Just what I was thinking about. My son, for example, who's in Japan right now. I love bragging about him. He's gotten probably 60% of his school paid for in scholarships, if not more. Um, my gosh, this is just um, horrifying to a parent, to a child. We're concerned that the he will fall behind his classes due to being absent for three consecutive days. And the school so far refusing to remove the suspension from the record, and the family's already gotten an attorney. Um, the son said, quote, I didn't make a statement directly towards anyone. I asked a question. I wasn't speaking of Hispanics because everyone from other countries needs green cards. The term illegal alien is actual, an actual term. I hear it on the news and can find it in the dictionary. This is vile. Okay, so here's what I want to ask you. Do you support? Uh, my questions are: Do you think the uh, term "illegal alien" is racist, as the school alleges? If this term is offensive, and I want to know is this term offensive to you? If you're Hispanic, as the school alleges that for Hispanics this is uh, offensive to you, and it's uh, an attack on on Hispanic people. And what do you call illegal aliens, regardless of whether you're Hispanic or not? Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. So do you think the term illegal alien is racist, as the school alleges, and is this term offensive to you if you're Hispanic, as the school is alleging? You know, this is classic white liberal speaking on your behalf. I wouldn't be surprised if the school district, which I don't know what would you know exactly what the makeup of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Lily White and they're telling you that Hispanics are offended by it. You know what I mean? I mean, these are the same idiots that came up with the, the BS term Latinx. And now they're saying Latine. I told you about that one, uh, Dave. Latine. Latine. Which means uh, you're Latino or Latina, but you are genderless. I mean, this is th these freaking leftist nuts will come up with so many BS stupid ideas. And uh, this is classic leftists telling uh, people that are, people of color how to think. And who to be offended by and what to be offended by. And who to vote for and who not to vote for. Um, and what do you call illegal aliens? I call them, like I said, my favorite term, and I, I have to confess, this was from a Chris Crock show listener, uh, is criminal invader. Criminal invader. That is my favorite term of all time. A listener said it, and he said it just regular, uh, regularly speaking, and I just loved it so much. I laughed my butt off. It's never left me. This is from a year or two ago. Criminal invader, and that's exactly what they are. They're criminal invaders. Can you imagine your son doing this, getting suspended for three days, and having that racism stain on their, on his uh, transcript? Oh, my gosh. I was just talking to uh, a fellow uh, Eagle Scout parent, one of my colleagues today at work, and, and uh, we both have applied for this scholarship every year. My, our sons have. Uh, for a scholarship every year for the Eagle Scout scholarship thing that you can get. And she's like, yeah, no, he's never gotten it. Mine's never gotten it because it's so competitive. They're all Eagle Scouts, she said. So imagine how competitive. I said, that's a good point. Imagine having racism on your record. Then you get no scholarships from anybody if they can, if they, if they can see that. All right, if you're Hispanic, you tell me if the term illegal alien is uh, offensive to you. As the school alleges, and do you think the term illegal alien is racist or as the school alleges or or not, and what do you call illegal aliens? I, I uh, criminal invader, uh, illegals is great, illegal alien, alien invader, the list goes on and on. What other, what other words can we come up with? I heard somebody say crimigrant once, which is not as good as criminal invader as far as I'm concerned. Crimigrant, you've never heard of that one? Crimigrant.
Um, man, there's got to be some better ones, though. None of which are offensive. It is simply describing who we're talking about. And by the way, the term migrant does not refer to the 9 to 11, 9 to 12 million illegals that have invaded us. They are not migrants. A migrant comes over lawfully to work. An illegal invader is who has come into our country. Uh, 90 to 95 percent of them will never qualify for asylum. They know it. We know it. And Joe Biden knows it. This is a slave class in, uh, imported to be taken advantage of in this country and to become future Democrats, and we all know it. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Also coming up next on the Chris Croc Show, we are going to get into the Republicans as they grill hard the Columbia president over anti-Semitism on their campus and you're going to hear some unbelievable things going down with uh, Jew haters in at Google, with Jew haters in Bakersfield, California, who threaten to kill people and get arrested and charged with felonies after they do that, thinking they're innocent. You're going to hear all that uh, and so much more. And you're going to hear about a current Columbia professor who said that Hamas attack on uh, October 7th was awesome. Unbelievable. And he still is there. And he's, a, he's a, like a chair of one of the departments. 